Hello fans of Agile Coding. Today I'm going to show you how you can convert your classic REST API built with Spring MVC into a modern REST API built with Spring Reactive. So we are doing some reactive programming in this session. So let me start by showing the difference between Spring Web Flux and Spring MVC. So if you look on this comparison picture in my blog article where you can find way more details, you will find it later in the descriptions below. Um, you can see we have a Spring Boot 2 stack here, but in this session I am going to use Spring 3, Spring Boot 3, so the picture is just a little bit outdated. Um, we, have on, we have on the left side the reactive stack as part of the Spring Reactor project and we have a servlet stack. You can set up your um, application with both stacks, with reactive stack and servlet stack in, in parallel, but I'm going to do presentation now where we do the complete shift directly to a modern application because it's also a simple demo application. Yeah, so the reactive stack is using, for example, Netty application server, whereas the servlet stack uh, might be using a Tomcat application server in the default. With the differences on database level, on security level, but today I'm focusing on the Spring MVC versus Spring Web Flux. So I'm showing you now in my IDE a web application which works like this. We can call it in the browser with localhost port 8080 pet 1, that is a um, endpoint, and then we get back a JSON, which is data read from the pet store API, and this name of this um, pet is a fish, and it has this ID. Yeah, this is the response which we get from my application, which I built for this demo, and the idea is um, the browser is the client, it's calling localhost 8080 as REST API middleware in the middle, that's what we are building and what we are checking, and this is then calling a backend, in this case it is the pet store um, API, which you can find in the internet uh, and can check it out with Swagger, so I'm calling the get pet find by status method so that I get a list of pets and then I just take the first pet in this list and I return it. That is what my application is doing. So let's have a quick look into the application code. It's a simple Spring Boot application built with Cradle. You can see it's built with Spring 3.1.0, latest version. Um, we are using Java 17 and we have just two simple dependencies, the Spring Boot Starter Web dependency, which brings the Tomcat and the um, Spring MVC. And then we have Spring Boot DevTools for quick restarts of the application server after each code change. So let's have a look in the demo code. It's, it's a pretty simple controller mixed with some other stuff for demo reasons. Yeah? So we have here a REST controller. The REST controller is offering one GET method and that is what we have seen a moment ago in the browser. So if I call GET PET1, yeah, this method is triggered. It calls another method called first pet with rest template. And here we are setting up an HTTP client with the help of the rest template. And then I'm calling get for entity. So we are sending a get request to the pet store URL. The pet store URL is, is what you have seen before in the browser, in the swagger. So we have pet store swagger IO version 2 pet find by status. And then we get a list of all pets. A list of all pets is uh, passed into a pet array class and then from this pet array class we just take um, the first element and we take it from the body. Yeah? So here we get back a response and then I'm interested only in the body and we take the first element. It's a simple demo so there is no error handling, no um, stuff around this. It's, it's just uh, for demo reasons now. Um, client is calling our system in the middle and we are calling a backend. Yeah? So that it's some, some kind of a realistic use case 
in terms of infrastructure components which we are using and it's not just returning hello world or something like that okay so um, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to have this thing reactive so let's go back to the cradle configuration and let's add spring web flux and remove spring web so therefore I have to quickly stop the application save it reload the cradle dependencies or refresh the cradle dependencies it was successful and then I can restart my application and the first first difference we should see is that we have now a netty application server and here you see it netty started on port 8080 so we are not using any more tomcat and that is the first part of the reactive stack but um, our code which we have here is still the classic implementation so that is still working yeah? I can reload and I still get a response so it's still working but let's add now a reactive style so that you can see the difference I added here a line uh, which you will use later to, to identify the difference between the reactive stack and the modern stack yeah? so let me quickly add another get method It's not a blocking call, it's now a reactive call. Yeah, so classic uh, servlet stack is always doing things in a blocking way. That means we request um, another backend and the main thread is blocked. Yeah, in the reactive style, that is different. So therefore, we don't use the web client. We use, uh, uh, sorry, we don't use the REST template. We use the web client, which is the reactive client, uh, a reactive HTTP client of Spring. And the result has to be a mono instead of just the pet. What is mono? Um, mono is some kind of data stream going from our application back to the client. And as soon as our application emits data, it's sent through the stream to the client. And that is the reactive style because the client can then yeah, subscribe on it, wait on it, and only if the data gets it, it does something. Yeah? And here we will see this reactive behavior behavior in um, the application server code yeah so we have the method first pet with web client so the first thing we have to do is we are going to do the same things as we do here in the classic stack first we are creating a new instance of the web client of our HTTP client then I'm using the client to trigger an HTTP GET request, therefore I'm using the method GET. I have to define a URI and that is again the pet store URL, so we are calling exactly the same endpoint. With retrieve I can specify um, what I'm go going to do with the response and I'm converting the body of the HTTP response into a pet array. So that works this way. And last step is we don't want a pet array, we just want the first pet. So we can do something on the mono which you might know from the stream API. So we can call, for example, map to use a function which does a conversion um, from one type into another. Yeah, and here I'm converting pets into the first element of this array. Yeah, and the result of this is still, oh sorry, the result is still a mono. Uh, let, let me write it clear. So it's of type mono pet. So we don't do not get the actual pet here in the code. We are just passing to the client the mono and then the client can decide when he subscribes for it so that he gets the data and that is really the different reactive style what we have now in use and to make this clearer I'm going to add one more line of logging here so the web client is not waiting for the response and so our first pet with web client method is also not waiting for the response. Okay, here I did a mistake. I forgot to 
rename um, the pass, yeah, and the second get method is pet2. So this is a reactive one, and pet1 is a blocking one. So now the application should restart and, and work. So let me restart it. Okay. And yeah, for the next time we want to read the logs. So let's start with the pet1 request and read the logs of it. I'm switching to the browser and I'm calling pet1. We see that is still working. Um, we call pet2. That's also working. Yeah. But in the logs we see now a difference. Yeah? So here we have the incoming request pet1. Pet1 um, is then creating the REST client and uh, REST template and then sending the GET request. And the main point is it's blocked. Yeah? So until we get the response and here we see the request has, sent, has been sent to the pet store API and here we got the response. Until this the main thread is blocked. And then we see the log entry waited for response. Yeah? So this line was blocked. It didn't proceed until the response was there. And that is the main difference to the reactive stack. Yeah? In the reactive stack, we have here the incoming get request for pet2. And then we are creating the web client. We are creating the mono. But this must not directly trigger the request to the pet store API. And that's why we see here in the next line, not waiting for response. Yeah? The main thread completes. It gives back to the client a mono, which is this data stream, where the client knows soon there will co come one or zero pets. Yeah? And then in the logs, we see that the HTTP request is sent to the pet store API, we received also 200 successful response, and then we sent the data back to the client. Yeah? But the main difference in the reactive programming is that in this uh, method, the main thread was never blocked uh, until the pet store API sent us uh, the response. Yeah? And that is something what you can achieve with the reactive, um, with the reactive uh, HTTP client, which is called web client, and in general our application was also not blocked, and that's why we are returning here in mono of a pet instead of just a pet as we do it typically in the classic Spring MVC style. If you liked this video, please give me a thumb up, and if you are interested in more content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So see you next time. Bye bye.